Hello folks and welcome to another pre-modern video we're going to be playing in the Magic Online Society playoffs today and the weapon of, co of choice of course you know what it is it's blue white stifle knot if you've been following my content you know that I'm all about this deck right now and I'm trying to make a little bit of adjustments uh, so we're going to be experimenting a little bit today. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing some sleight of hand and the reason behind playing some, uh, some of this card is I wanted to try out extra cantrips, right? The mono blue stifle knot that everybody loves or hates, <laughs> depending on who you ask, uh, has a very, very uh, powerful engine, right? Which is we are uh, playing a bunch of free spells and we are playing this combo with dreadnought and vision charm and stifle, right? So it's basically a two mana, two cards, 12 12 that ends the game in two swings. So that's what we're trying to do. In order to put it together, we have a bunch of cantrips. Uh, however, I do think that the vast majority of the cantrips in the mono blue dreadnought deck are pretty bad. And not only that, I also think that Manly Mage is absolutely fantastic in this deck. So because of that, I am splashing white. But in order to make room for that, not only am I uh, messing up with the mana a little bit, so you're going to see that I have uh, nine islands plus four flooded strands as basic islands. And then I have four darker wastes and one basic planes to go fetch for with flooded strands. Um, and... What that gives me is, first of all, another angle of attack against combo decks, the melee mage is absolutely fantastic, and also mage is very, very good at protecting Dreadnought, because there are not that many cards that actually uh, can kill your Dreadnought, so you're trying to name source of Blushers with melee mage, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're good to go. Like, your, your opponent can't kill your mage with STP, and they also cannot kill your Dreadnought, so you're just saving your counter magic in four foils, two counter spells, and four daces. You're saving these in order to protect uh, your Dreadnoughts and melee mages for cards like Wrath of God, like whatever else your opponent has access to. Of course, the deck is only possible because Foil and Gush are incredible together. And uh, what the white cards do as well is they give me access to a tutor package. In my previous lists, I was playing a much more robust package. I was playing main deck Winter Orb. I was playing uh, some, some other cards like that. In this one, we have a pretty uh, succinct one. And we have access to just like the four Dreadnoughts in order to set up the combo. And then one seal of removal which is fantastic in the mirror and stuff like that. One Seal of Cleansing, which can get me out of some sticky situations. One Singleton Fire in Furnace, which is against the graveyard decks a la uh, the, uh, the other Dreadnought deck in Angry Hermit and stuff like that. Uh, and also, uh, that's kind of it. <laughs> so, very small package that has some very specific uh, answer cards. Uh, but in place of that, I'm playing Sleight of Hand. So, I think that the cantrips that the mono blue dreadnought deck plays are pretty bad overall and that's obviously because of how the format is set up like brainstorm is banned right like even though it would be available because of what uh, the sets that are currently legal in the format uh, the whole point is that we don't have we don't want premodern to be legacy 2.0 so because of that brainstorm is banned and the uh, the actual cantrips that we have access to are sleight of hand portent and even stuff like impulse those are the cantrips that the mono blue dreadnought decks are playing I am not a fan of Impulse. I think that is just really, really bad. I think that cantripping for two mana is just awful. It doesn't help you hit land drops and stuff like that. So because of that kind of stuff, I don't like Impulse to begin with. And then Portent has kind of the same issue in the deck where you're playing a very low land count, effectively a 17 land deck because this planes is not really, not really a land for this deck's purposes. Um, so you're playing a very low land count. And the idea is you're playing less lands because you're playing more cantrips, but... If you do miss your land drop on turn two, if you draw a portent, that doesn't actually allow you to hit your land drop. And the same is true in the late game, right? If you have like three, four lands in play, if you have access to portent, you can look at the top three cards and then you do see a dreadnought, but you still have to wait one whole turn uh, in order to actually deploy your combo, which can be game losing in a variety of scenarios. Obviously, Portent has other upsides. You can mess around with your opponent's uh, top of the deck and things like that. Uh, but I think that overall, as a cantrip is concerned, the fact that it doesn't play well with counter spells, stifle, and stuff like that, which, which makes up the best cantrip available, in my opinion, um, it it also doesn't help, it helps better than Portent to hit your land drops and to assemble your combo. So I think I'm, I'm favoring Sleight of Hand over Portent. I've not play, played Portent yet, but I'm not really excited about doing it either. So I probably will just go with Sleight of Hand and see how it feels. Uh, but yeah, so 
playing more cantrips, playing less uh, pieces for the uh, for the enlightened tutor package. Those are the changes that I made. I also moved the sword supplies that I had access to in the main deck to the sideboard. I do think this card is fantastic in the in the mirror of of course, and then against a bunch of other decks. Killing your opponent's meddling mages and being able to uh, to mess with your opponent's game plan versus uh, you know stuff like madness versus stuff like elves and whatnot. So um, not super happy to not have access to plow in the main deck any longer, but it kind of is what it is. Uh, singleton copy of Seal of Cleansing. This card is obviously fantastic, and we can tutor for it in the matchups where it matters. Another copy of Counterspell. This is like the weird one out here, but the idea for Counterspell, which maybe it's not as important as it used to be in my previous list, is in matchups where I'm cutting Source of Plowshares, and if I am on the draw, for example, and I'm cutting uh, some number of Thesis, then all of a sudden I have a bunch of bad cards that I want to take out, but I don't have any good cards that I really want to be, bring in. Think of combo decks and stuff like that. So because of that, I want to have access to sort of a catch-all in my sideboard that can make my sideboarding a little bit more smooth. And that's uh, that's the role that Counterspell is playing. Uh, some number of Hydroblast and Blue Elemental Blast, obviously against Goblins, obviously against Sly and stuff like that. Uh, and a couple of copies of a Null. This card is obviously incredible in the format, being able to counter opposing Dreadnoughts, being able to counter... Uh, a, a, other combo cards like Oath of Druids and whatnot, I know is going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, Winter Ore versus the Rock, Astral Slide, Blue White, Land Still, stuff like that. Nor Rod is an interesting one. Uh, this is me respecting Parfait, basically. So, uh, versus Parfait and other Mox Diamond style decks, I think Nor Rod is very, very powerful. And I don't necessarily think that those matchups are great for me. Obviously, Meddling Mage makes things a lot better than versus the Mono Blue version, right? Because I can get rid of a bunch of answers from my opponent. Uh, but then, you know, you're dealing with Oath. Like, there's a bunch of other stuff, so... Obviously, the tax rack deck are very, very strong, and no role is going to shine in those. A couple of copies of Cursed Totem. This is like the single tone card that I'm playing, uh, the single tone Tudor target that I'm playing two copies of. And the reason for this is that I want to be casting this on turn two versus stuff like Elves versus uh, Madness. Uh, there are a variety of decks that Cursed Totem really, really shines against. So. I respect those decks a lot, and uh, this is kind of like my 14th, uh, 15th cyber card, sorry. So this could be something else if you don't want to be respecting those decks. Like if you choose to respect Parfait more than Elves, fine. You can just make that really quick switch and you're going to be good to go. Finally, Tormo Script, obviously against the combo decks, Angry Hermit or like any Hermit-based deck, and uh, Replenish, things like that, so... This is the deck that we're going to be playing through these uh, playoffs, so if you enjoyed, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. If you would like to support my content, uh, you can do so in a variety of different ways, including um, using the links uh, of in the description down below whenever you're using uh, the services of both Mana Traders and TCGplayer.com. And if you would like to actually support uh, my content uh, in a direct way, you can do so through Patreon, you can do so through donations. I can play any decks of your choosing with any donation of $30 or more. And finally, of course, you can book coaching sessions if you're interested in taking your plane to the next level. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you for round number one, folks. Okay, here we are for round number one of these playoffs, and this hand looks fine. We have an island, we have some opts to cantrip away. I'm gonna lean on opt because I don't know what my opponent is up to. And I may, uh, after I find some more information, I may want to be cycling. I'm, I'm looking for lands anyway. Okay, so we're against some form of combo here. I'm gonna see if we can find a daze. Maybe we can find a daze. Gush. Uh, gush is tempting, but I definitely need some lands before anything. I'm just gonna let this careful study resolve. Pandemonium and Saffron Burst. Okay, so we're playing against Panda Burst. This deck is pretty sweet, so I'm just gonna name Replenish here with a Meddling Mage, which is going to severely limit what my opponent can do. And I'm just gonna save this foil for uh, like Parallax Wave or whatever answer my opponent could have to this Meddling Mage. Second careful study is good. Crossroad Reclamation and Replenish have been discarded. We're looking pretty good here. Now we have actual counter spell. We're, we're looking really good here now. Just swing in for two. Put on the pressure. My opponent has... This gemstone mine is not long for this word. Uh, okay, so this duress is going to take my counter spell. I could just counter this. I think I'm going to. I think hiding the information is pretty valuable here. I can still foil if I find an out... Oh. That's a fantastic draw. All right, we keep on beating down. 
Opponent's mana base is rather punishing. <laughs> it's a land that destroys itself and two lands that three lands that deal them damage. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So here we're just gonna opt on end step, looking for Cantrip doesn't do it in this spot. I, I definitely want to hold on to some lands. Um Phyrexian Furnace is not terrible. This is gonna exile the Saprum Burst, which is nice. Um so Looking pretty decent here. We have Days plus Counterspell up. Furnace is gonna start to go to town. Target my opponent with Furnace. A Darker Waste. It's another land, it's not terrible. Um, this allows me to hard cast Foil, but I don't wanna do that because the Days makes it so... Uh, I'm, I'm just activating it here because, yeah, that, that's gonna exile eventually. Uh, but here, uh, the days actually enables my foil, which is very nice. Yeah. Medley Mage, just doing Medley Mage things, as it often does. Okay, so Anol seems decent. Tormal Script seems great. Winter Orb seems fantastic. Counterspell also great. This new list with the Slide of Hands is a little bit more awkward. I think I want to cut a Dreadnought, maybe a Vision Charm. Because I think I'd rather have Stifle than Vision Charms. Maybe two Vision Charms, actually. Um, like This is my main game plan here. Medley Mage is my main game plan. Uh, I'm wondering whether I should be bringing in some uh, Blue Elemental Blast and Hydro Blast to protect from my opponent's revs and whatnot. Oh, Seal of Cleansing definitely was. I'm just going to cut a couple of daces and call it a day. This looks decent to me. This My main game plan here is, is Medley Mage, right? It always is. It's like the astronaut meme. It always has been. Uh, yep, definitely keeping this hand. Most definitely keeping this hand. And I think I'm gonna go turn one furnace. So we can have that going. Undiscovered Paradise. Wow, I'm surprised how how good this card looks on, on MTGO. Uh, I don't care about that card whatsoever. I'm surprised that card is in my opponent's deck, honestly. I guess I did not, my opponent did not see uh, Dreadnought, so maybe they don't know that I'm playing Stifle Knot. So that may, that may just be it. So here we're gonna opt looking for a land. That's really tempting, but I think I need to just start doing some stuff here. Let's slide a hand first. Yeah, we're gonna get that gush. Play the land and say go. Uh, so Furnace. Not doing anything just yet, but it is preventing my opponent from also doing anything at all. <laughs> Another foil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. So if I float some mana here, then I gush. No, I'm just going to pass it back. I don't think this is a good turn to gush. Maybe I should be cycling this furnace at this point, considering my opponent has pivoted into this sort of oath deck. At the same time, I don't really have to do anything. Like they're They're kind of not doing anything either. So I can just sit here and do nothing while my opponent goes to this card. Hitting land drops would be great. Frantic search. So I guess I don't care about this tutor, so I'm going to be discarding that. I think having drawn second gush, I'm going to discard anyway. I kind of want to keep hitting my land drops. I'm still going to be able to hold up counterspell and foil. So I think I'm just going to... F uh, yeah. So the issue that I have with this is that if I gush and I find a white source, then I'm not holding up counterspell for my next turn. And it's not like I can dreadnought before I get rid of this oath. So I think I'm just gonna pass here this card in this enlightening tutor. What I really need to find is like another cantrip or oops, I forgot to forgot to activate furnace. Probably not gonna matter too much, but there it is. There's my white source. Here's a seal of cleansing, and now. Now we're looking very, very good. Orim's Chant is an interesting one. Particularly when my opponent is missing land drops. Oh, wow! Wow, I guess they just got frustrated because they didn't find land drops. That's a really, that's a really early concession though. All right, I'll take it. We're one and out. Sounds good to me. All right, so yeah. Yeah, we're keeping this hand. Turn one, slide a hand, looking for that second land, and once we find that second land, we're we're looking good. Turn one, Battlefield Forge. Huh. Okay. So now that I drew the land, 
What do I want to do now that I drew the land? I still think I want to find another basic island. I still think I want to find another land here. Uh, <laughs> that's an interesting one. I, I'm, I'm going to go for the second land, but... Because uh, that enables Gush, and then Gush enables Foil. So I think this is fine. Spark Spray. Okay, so we're playing against... Uh, we're playing against the Rift deck, which is good for us. Because <clears throat> this is probably going to be pretty, a pretty solid... It's going to be a pretty solid turn right here. We could get Plowed, but um, we're going to have Foil to beat the first Plow. If Lani has a second Foil, we're going to be in trouble, but... A second Plow, sorry. We're going to be in trouble, but... Otherwise, we're looking good. Astral Slide, we probably have to counter. Um, I could... No, never mind, I can't. So I have to... I do have to counter. There. And I'm going to discard... I think I'm discarding the Tutor. Tutor allows me to set up, to set up another Stifle plus Dreadnought if I need it, so I think I'm just going to get rid of the Slider Hand, actually. So, yeah. Mm, that's a Gush, which is interesting. Now let's go for Flooded Strand. Um, let's, uh, let's 12 my opponent over here. Down to 6. Uh, Plow is a problem, but again, that then I can just go ahead and set up... I can set up Tutor plus... Plus, what's his name? It's kind of awkward that I do have to do it now, meaning that I'm not gonna be able to have counter spell. I think that's still worth it, though. I think that's still worth it. So I'm just gonna tutor for another. Yeah, I'm just gonna tutor for another dreadnought and just drop it. Um, the other option would be to just uh, pass the turn instead. But I think I don't want to play around second source to Plowshares. He's definitely not going to have access to second Astral Slide. And if, he's ha if he has a Plow here, we're going to lose. But I think it's fine to go for it here. Cycling Decree is good for me, obviously. Means that he probably doesn't have too much to work with. Cycle Forgotten Cave. It's going to shock me, no shock. He's down five. Seal of Cleansing would be a beating, I guess. Renewed Faith. Last, last look. <laughs> Can he find it? Can he find Source of Plowshares? Can he find the Source of Plowshares? It's the only card that matters at this point. Nope, he cannot find it. Sounds great. All right, awesome. So now we like Seal of Cleansing. We definitely like New, uh, Winter Orb. And Annulls and Hydroblasts and all of these cards are also fantastic. Counterspell is a maybe. Uh, Seal of Removal is going to go. Same with Furnace. Probably a couple of Daces are going to get cut. I think I like the Tutors. Particularly because Winter Orb is such a beating in this matchup. Meddling Mage can potentially go. Meddling Mage is pretty good though. I think Dreadnought is my better threat, though. So l let's cut one of the mages. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe one foil, one counter spell. Since I'm bringing in a bunch of annuls and stuff. Maybe I'm overdoing it with the Hydro Blasts and Rebs and Blue Elemental Blast, but my opponent's going to be bringing their own Rebs and whatnot, so I kind of want to have that as a counter to their counter, basically. Mm, this looks decent to me. Maybe cut another Medley Mage. I could just cut all the Medley Mages. Yeah, because my opponent's going to have Source to Plushers, they're going to have um, Red Elemental Blast. So this means I get to play another Counterspell, another Foil, and just basically play Mono Blue Dreadnought. Just play Mono Blue Dreadnought with, answer, with access to Tutor and Seal of Cleansing. That's what we're doing here. Okay. Okay, I think I'm into it. I think I'm into it. It's, it's an interesting approach. But I think it's gonna work out. Okay, so... A darker Wastes into Slider Hand. Yeah, okay, I'll keep this. Obviously my best draw is gonna be a basic island, so I can just hold up days on turn two as well. But this seems like a fine keep. And I think I'm going to... Hmm. I think I'm going to Slider Hand here looking for a land, because I can opt while holding up Counterspell next turn. Uh, missing land drop, so I think I'm going to take... I guess I'm going to take the foil because I have Gush in hand instead of the second copy of Counterspell. This looks decent to me, though. Really want to dodge the Rift here. Okay, so that puts that puts a clock on me. Island is great, though. 
Um, I think I'm going to pass the turn and just opt on my opponent's sense step. I want to make sure that I have at least one or two layers of uh, protection for this dreadnought, so I'm going to at least um, I'm going to as, at least um, go for it when I have four lands or more in play. So opponent plays a land and passes, which is fine. Here's an opt into another opt. This allows me to cantrip again at the cost of one life. I think that's worth it. It allows me to potentially scry a, a bad card to the bottom. Yeah, all right, worth it. <laughs> a darker waste's not great. Would have much rather had access to an island, but I'll take it for now. Gonna pass it back here. Opponent passes the turn straight up. Interesting. Okay. Well, land go. No cycling, no nothing. So I have to imagine they have some number of rebs over there. Okay. I'm gonna pass this one back. And we're gonna potentially go for it next turn. Seal of cleansing. Yeah, that seems worth counterspelling. Um, so it's kind of that. Uses my mana in my opponent's turn, which is nice. And step. Now what I can do. Okay, I do hit my land drop, which makes things a little bit more interesting. So I have seven cards in hand. If I gush, I, I two, get two cards back and one less. So that's going to be eight cards in hand plus draw two is going to be nine, ten. And then we can fight over it. I think that's fine. I guess I want to play out the island first in case I need to daze anything, which seems unlikely, but maybe I have to. <laughs> Seal of Cleansings times two. All right, I think I'll take that. I think I'll take that. So let's play a seal. And I'm just going to play another seal, which is going to completely stop my opponent's clock. And I can just chill a little bit more. Just chill a little bit longer. So now opponent does not have a clock. And I can go to untap. Play the land and pass. Four cards in hand. Hydroblast is nice. I think I would like exactly one more thing so let's seal now see what my opponent does i think they're yeah i think they're just not gonna do anything so i'm just gonna chill here just gonna pass it back once again because right now i have effectively only one layer of protection which is not enough i just have the foil and the hydroblast rune of protection red still in the deck so i guess they are just missing something to do they're just missing like cyber cards basically lightning rift is good don't care about it so I'm going to untap, probably gonna, that's great. Okay, so that's exactly what I was looking for. So now I can do that. I can go Dreadnought. I can go Dreadnought into Stifle, into Hydroblast, into Vision Charm. Seems good enough. And I think I'm going for, for Stifle on the trigger as opposed to Vision Charm. Reason being, these beats Source to Plowshares and this does not. So there's going to be a Stifle here. I imagine some form of Hydroblast is going to be happening here. Or not. Point on taps. Battlefield Forge. Two mana, three mana for Astral Slide. That one's going to need to get foiled, I think. So we're going to foil here. Discarding Island and Dreadnought. Yeah. Could also discard days, but we could have like a bigger counter war happening here. Pyroblast. Counter target spell if it's red. Maybe they have another Hydroblast here? Two cards left in hand. It's not that many. So that resolved. Second. Yeah. So there's a rev, which means that my opponent has only one card left in hand. And now I'm in a little bit of trouble. Maybe I shouldn't have used that seal of cleansing so aggressively. Best draw would be Winter Orb, I think. Opponent waits until my end step in order to cycle Dreadnought, which is the correct play. And now I'm on the lock. So I'm going to have to Vision Charm again. <clears throat> so here's when my boy is going to be coming back. Now we're just going to be Vision Charming again. And I have to dodge Cyclers, which is definitely not where I want to be. <laughs> Most of my opponent's cards just kill me here. Oops. Okay, so another cycle is GG's. Let's move on to game number three. Huh, Astral Slide is a little bit of a beating there. Mm hmm. Let's cut a tutor for a daze. Oh, I guess daze was pretty bad there. 
I think I'm gonna bring bring in melee mages in place of Thesis. Uh, Thesis do enable my foils though, so maybe they're just fine. Yeah, I think I'd rather have the other tutor than medley mage. This looks fine. Let's go with this. I think my mistake in that game was caring at all about Lightning Rift. I think that my opponent's clock is kind of irrelevant because I can basically erase any clock they could have. So as long as there's no not two of them, if there's only one Lightning Rift, I should basically do nothing. So I think I, I could have probably won that previous game had I saved the second Seal of Cleansing. I think using the first one was fine, but I think the second one I should have just left in play, just sitting there so that I can uh, I can just blow up Astral Slide, which is really the only enchantment that truly matters, right? So I, f I certainly feel like that game could have been won if I had played a little bit better. We do get to be on the play this time around, and I think I keep this. Um, am I going for it on turn two with only single Daces backup? Probably not. If I draw an island, maybe I will, because I'll have double Dace at that point. Slide a hand. Yeah, okay. I'll do that instead. Let's see what we find here. Opt. Sure. Pass the turn back. Just opt to my opponent's sense that they cycle on my end step. Which is kind of a good sign for me, actually. So now they have planes. Huh. So let's opt. Looking for foil is interesting. Am I keeping foil? Yeah, I think I am. So there's foil. Second stifle. I'm not super high on second stifle, but cycling eternal dragon. Maybe I should have stifled that actually. Hmm. So they're showing me that they still have. Mm hmm. So now I can winter orb. So let's daze this. <clears throat> then I'll tutor for winter orb and pass the turn. Untap. Play orb. Pass it back. And now. I can potentially mess my opponent up here. Maybe I should have let I should have left the 2 2 resolve. Get the top island here. Second island is nice. Uh, so my opponent has Fire Blast for sure. I think I'm just gonna chill a little bit. Because if I just end tap, I can I can use the second stifle to play around fire uh, to play Pyro Blast. Six cards in hand for my opponent to my five. Slide of hand. Hmm. What am I looking for? If I go for Dreadnought here, my opponent Pyroblast stifle. I let it go. I stifle again. Then they daze. And I foil. Then I daze and then foil. Yeah, that's kind of not super great. So I think I'm gonna slide of hand it's the, instead. Seal is interesting. Do I care about strength? don't think yet, so I'm just gonna take the seal and just pass it back. Seal is also something that I can spend my mana on, that just sits there in play. Gives me value over time. Opponent has been hitting their land drops, but their engine is kind of limited. The, the, their engine is not online. So let's seal. I think I'm gonna play a land and say go. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have the island for days, uh, for foil to these days. Cycling Spark Spray is good for me. I assume my opponent is looking for an answer to this Winter Orb. They are hitting their land drops, but it doesn't add up to too much if they're not using their mana. Vision Charm, that's good. That's another card that protects my Dreadnought, which is nice. Opponent continues to cycle, which is good for me, because they're just cycling but not, accruing, not, not getting any value from cycling. This daze is not looking good though. <laughs> I'm happy I, I cut the other ones. Although this daze is uh, is actually enabling my foil. So it's not actually just dead, but it's not particularly great either. Um, am I playing this island? It's a card I can pitch to foil. So if I go for it here, one for Dreadnought, one for Stifle. Opponent Pyroblasts. I Stifle again, opponent Pyroblasts again. I Vision Charm. Then opponent daces. I think I just need for them to spend their mana on anything. What I would really like to do, maybe I should have played a land so that, because my best draw here is Gush. And uh, yeah, I should actually play the island. Because I can just, if I want, if I really wanted to, I would just hard cast the foil anyway. And my best draw is Gush. And having more lands in play makes my Gushes better. 
So I think that was a mistake. I should have actually should have done something different there. Enlightened Tutor. Doesn't really do anything. That's probably going to be the card that I pitched to foil, honestly. So at this point, my opponent is going to have a little bit more freedom, freedom regarding Winter Orb. Oh wow, they're going for the Kree. Okay. They're really going to pay. Okay, so I, I love this. This is really good for me. I have to imagine that they have a bunch of lands in hand. But this is kind of exactly what I needed to happen. That's why I let the, the soldier triggers resolve. So now I'm going to take four. That's fine. I'm going to go down to 13. Now untap, annul. That's, that's kind of great, actually. So here's a Dreadnought, and here's a Stifle. So here's where we, when we go for the fight. That resolved. Okay, pass it back. Point and taps. They're gonna have access to a bunch of mana. Play land. <laughs> they have not missed the land drop, I don't think. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, yeah. Been hitting land drops every turn. Source to plowshares. I think I'm going to attempt to vision charm. Huh. So now they power blast. I can dace and foil. Or I can just tutor for another one and next turn go for it again. I'm going to take four down to nine and I'm going to take one from the tutor, which means I'm going to go down to eight. But I really would like to exchange this daze for a real card. So I think this is fine. I'm going to be pitching the annul to the foil. I guess I'm going to win a bunch of lives, so never mind. Take four. Um, I think... I guess I just untap, untap island, draw dreadnought. Ah. <laughs> Would have been nice. I'm only doing this because I bought a bunch of life with the sword, so my opponent's clock is not as important anymore. And having drawn this hydroblast gives me a pretty significant leeway. So here, if I tutor, I'm going to tutor, then stifle, then. Man, I, I, I'm really struggling to get any value from this days, which is kind of devastating. So let's tutor for another Dreadnought. I wonder if my opponent just sided out all of the rifts. So now I go Dreadnought Stifle with Hydroblast Backup plus Foil Backup. Cyclos Park Spray is good. I'll take that. That uses a mana and it doesn't achieve anything. So that's definitely good for me. All right, so that just happened. So now another plow would be a little bit of a beating, but I can daze the plow to tap my opponent out a little bit further and then foil. So daze, opponent taps, which is not great for me, but here we go. And I'm gonna foil pitching the annul, which means that if my opponent has an astral slide, they're gonna need to go land into astral slide and I can seal off cleansing and lose, but I need to protect their uh, with the Hydroblast. We are in dire straits here though. We're not in good shape. I need to dodge my opponent having another Source to Plowshares or Seal of Cleansing. And I also have to dodge my opponent having... Um, I need to dodge my opponent having uh, Astro Slide as well because they can just hold on, wait until next turn. Yeah. Cycle Forgotten Cave is good. Still got a dodge here though. Cycle Secluded Steps, also good. Still got a dodge. Best draw for me here, hands down, is Gush. Uh, Barring Gush, Counterspell is probably my best draw. Uh, here we do see the, the the price of Enlightened Tutor, right? Like this card is great in the deck, obviously, but uh, we are paying the price of Basic Island. Yeah, as I said earlier, Gush is my best draw, so because Gush is my best draw, playing Lance is good. So here's 12 damage. You have one more turn opponent to find Source to Plowshares or Seal of Cleansing. And at this point, nothing else matters. It's either Source to Plowshares or Seal of Cleansing. At this point, Astral Slide doesn't do anything. They're not going to have enough mana to play the slide and also cycle. So, so STP or bust. STP or bust. That's the name of the game right here. They can't even block because they still take 12. Going to make me do it. Respect it. Please don't have it. Please don't have it. Please don't have it. Here's an attack for 12. Please don't have it. And do we have it or not? Oh, they can cycle. Oh, they can cycle the, the thing that gives them a land. 
uh, that gives them two life. So I think that's the play. Renewed faith. Okay, that's okay. We get two more looks. Opponent gets two more looks. Down to two. And one more look at Swords to Plowshares. And tapping Battlefield Forge is interesting. Because they already had the second plane, so this means that they can cycle. So at that point, no, no, that, that's actually right, great. Because they can cycle either a red or a white card. Woo! Boom, baby! And that's how it goes. Shout out to Winter Orb. Shout out to Winter Orb, one of the most powerful cards uh, that I could think of in, in, in this deck, in this kind of matchup. Against decks like this, Standstill, The Rock, Winter Orb has been incredible. And of course, being able to tutor for it like we did this game, uh, very, very powerful. So, good stuff. We're 2-0. All right, so this is round number three. And unfortunately, I made a mistake here and um, OBS messed up with my microphone so i don't have any audio so what i wanted to do is i wanted to play the match and record some commentary over it so uh, this is gonna be against uh, jacaretinga so let's get started we get dealt a pretty decent hand we have some cantrips we have uh, the combo i guess half of the combo we have furnished which can be very useful in a variety of matchups so uh, this is not a terrible hand, uh, and looking making making the, the hand look good for a sleight of hand. I choose to go with sleight of hand first, because if I find counterspell, um, having access to opt as opposed to sleight of hand allows me to next turn hold up a counterspell, and um, if my opponent doesn't do anything, I can just opt on my opponent's hand step. So they start with careful study, which makes me think that they're maybe playing some combo or potentially some madness. Those are the, the decks that come to mind. And um, now they're going to discard Cidio Brass and Yabimaya Coast, which puts them on madness. So we untap and we draw another island, which is not great, but it's also not terrible either. So we get to go slide a hand first, see what happens. Opponent could be holding days, we don't know, but we don't care if they counter a cantrip. Here it's very interesting, we're like we can go for days or we can go for stifle. And it's actually very curious because if they're going to go for survival, then I really want a day's survival on turn two. But Stifle allows me to raise that survival, meaning that I get to combo on turn two and then I can go from there. So I choose to play the Phyrexian Furnace here, which may or may not be a mistake. I wanted to get the Furnace into play just in case my opponent is playing like Squeeze as an engine or whatever, and I want to get rid of them. So... Um, it may be a mistake, maybe I want to play Opt instead. Uh, I think it's close, uh, but uh, yeah, I end up going for Furnace, get it out of my hand and onto play and start to, to grind that graveyard. Then they play a Dreadnought and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, here I'm thinking that they're doing the um, what Cyberpunker Punker was doing and trying to just jam Dreadnought into Madness, which I on honestly think that it could be it could be the way to go. Uh, it could be something very, very interesting. But yeah, so they assemble the combo and I have my own Dreadnought and I, of course, stop the, the days right on time. <laughs> so activate Furnace. Now we get to put our own Dreadnought in, in play and see what's up. So uh, here comes the Dreadnought. We stifle the trigger and then we pass the turn back to see what my opponent has to offer. They untap and now things could go many different places here things could actually go a couple of different places my opponent has removal if they have water from bouncer that could be a problem as well um so i need to kind of cash this days in and exchange it for something but right now the question is whether i trade or not now that they show me mental notes now i don't think it's madness anymore and now i feel like they're doing some threshold stuff potentially werebears potentially nimble mongoose i actually played a deck uh, like this in my very first uh, league and here they play winter orb which i think is very interesting and i think it actually helps me more than it hurts me so uh, because it makes my days a lot better so I choose to just let it resolve and sort of cash in these days. So now I can use the days to actually protect my, my Dreadnought and potentially even raise my opponents. So they do attack and we can cycle uh, with Furnace. So 
What I choose to do instead is opt and see what the top of my deck delivers. And I see Vision Charm. And Vision Charm effectively means that I win, right? I'm going to win the race with Days Backup, which is great. So now I can take the 12. I pass the turn back. Um, and I attack for 12. And tap my island. Then I can just Vision Charm my opponent's Dreadnought and kind of go from there. Drawing Gush, obviously, it, it, it's great as well. So... We get to gush instead, uh, draw a couple of cards, another dreadnought, which I can set up, but the problem with setting up a dreadnought is that I need to trade this one, and if my opponent has a, a, a removal for this one, it puts me in a, in, a, in a similar spot. So I think it's much, much better for me to just attack, race, and then have my opponent untap their one land um, on their upkeep, and then I simply I simply just vision charm their, uh, their dude on upkeep, and I just swing for lethal. And I can do this with foil and days backup. So I'm feeling pretty pretty good about myself. I definitely want to prevent my opponent from like drawing a gush or drawing a foil or something like that. So I definitely want to be doing this on upkeep. Face out dreadnought opponent casts gush in response, which I think I straight up just have to foil. Pitching island and second island. I could have also pitched dreadnought there, but I, if, if my opponent does have an main deck and summon or main deck naturalize or something like, I guess main deck naturalize I don't care about because I have days, but if they do have exactly main deck and summon, then I'm going to need to be able to set up the combo again, which makes, I, I guess that that was actually wrong because if they actually unsummon my dude, then I'm going to, I'm going to have the dude in hand. So. <laughs> Okay, so in Cyborthing, opponent, opponent has nothing and we end up winning. And in Cyborthing, it's actually very interesting, right? Because cards like Meddling Mage can be great or they can also be terrible. Because if I'm naming Dreadnought, then neither of us had Dreadnoughts, but my opponent is going to have Werebears and Nimble Mongies. And that, those are obviously bigger than Meddling Mage, so I don't want to be doing that. Definitely one Source to Plushers, definitely one Seal of Cleansing, definitely one Annul. And Seal of Removal is probably going to be the, the actual MVP in this matchup. We have Tutor, we have Cleansings, we have Removal, we have Seal of Removal. So lots of options. It's just a matter of I'm on the draw, so Days is obviously a lot worse. Counterspell also much, much worse on the draw than on the play. So that's what I'm trying to weigh in here. And I could actually see argument for going multiple directions. Like I could see arguments for cutting all the counter spells. I could see arguments for just straight up cutting the Alighted Tutor package. Or like just cutting the tutors and hoping that I draw things naturally. So it's interesting, right? Like th there are a couple of different ways that the, the match can go depending on how my opponent cyborgs. And I don't have enough information about their deck list. So I want to remain flexible and I want to try to make sure that I have answers to potentially the answers that they can have. So it's a, it's a, it's a challenging line to thread. I end up choosing to go for one days, one counterspell, just l a couple of misers and take it from there. All right, so we are dealt this hand, which actually does not look half bad, huh? So we have the combo set up, we have foil to protect it, um, but I'm assuming my opponent is also going to have their, their combo potentially set up. They move to six, but they are on the play, so we will see where things go from here. We have time. Lead on basic island, drawing the days is obviously great at this early early part of the game. Uh, definitely happy to see days uh, when it's the one-off in our deck, right? <laughs> and it's turn one. You don't want to see days on turn seven, but turn days on turn one or two is, is, is great. Love to see it. Opponent goes island, forest, and they just pass the turn back. So here we could have played a darker waste, so we could have played the second island. Because I have, of course, I have gushes in my deck. I could do that, but I'm not going to double foil anything, basically. So there's no real reason to hold up multiple islands. And also, if I really want to, I can just daze in the process as well. So the point opts on my end step, uh, nothing too crazy. They play another island, and now we're there. And now we finally see what my opponent's doing. They're doing something similar to... Uh, to Lurin Threshold. My very first league, I actually, uh, in, in MTGO with the Magic Online Society, I actually played something very similar to this, and then I actually talked to my opponent after our match, and they said that they were inspired by, <laughs> by my list. So it seems like that's what's going on here. Uh, here I'm choosing to go for Flooded Strand as opposed to a Darker Waste. I'm going to attempt to fetch for, for Basic Planes. My opponent can Stifle, but if they Stifle my Flooded Strand, it's kind of fine as well. The only thing that I want is I do not, I, I, the, the I know that I know is that I do not want to 
to play that basic island, right? Like I want to save the basic island for, I want to save the basic island for my thing, my um, foil. So they do stifle my land, and now I can go for it with only foil backup. But I think it's reasonable to do that. Like the chance, there, there's this possibility that my opponent has double naturalized. But if they have never double naturalized, I can also cash in these days and protect it from the second one. And someone is a lot more problematic, but Celavi. So, so now my opponent on taps and they just go to combat swinging in for one. So this is either great or terrible for me. <laughs> I think it's more likely to be terrible because it means that my opponent has multiple answers. But it could be great because if they have a summon plus naturalize, now I can actually leverage these days, which is great. So now we attempt to foil the unsummon, and I can pitch a second foil or I can pitch a darker wastes. I end up pitching a Darker Waste because uh, the foil I can uh, potentially, if I find, not in this turn right now, obviously, but if I do get to draw a card, then I can uh, turn the foil into protection. So, And now, Nightmare Scenario, opponent has the second on summon, which is the only card that I can't beat. So we just have to take the L <laughs> and move on to our main phase. We find a basic island, which I can play out or not. I choose to play because, again, I can just daze. I can turn this daze into a basic island anyway. So I think that holding onto the, the land is good. And my opponent is also playing a daze deck, so... They swing in for one, so their clock is not particularly good, but now they have Nimble, nimble Mongoose, and now their clock can potentially get a lot better. So we find a land, play out the other Arcar Wastes, and pass it back. Now we can actually foil whatever they play. We could just hard cast the foil. Uh, is there's actually an argument for just countering here the careful study? I choose to let it go because I'd rather. I think I need to set up my combo in order to win this game. But this actually really speeds up my opponent's clock, right? Like it went from an eight turn clock to like an actual two turn clock now, a three turn clock, sorry. So obviously that's a pretty significant change. So maybe there was an argument for just actually hard casting the foil there, just so I can buy more time uh, to set up my combo. Then obviously I get punished by drawing another foil, but that's just how it works sometimes. And again, like, I'm still not sure that I was supposed to play that at Arcor Wastes, at least not without having drawn my Source to Pleasures or anything like that. At this point, however, uh, we just cannot race. So even if I do find Stifle off the top and I can, you know, protect or whatever, like, it, it just doesn't do anything, right? Like, I just, I'm down to three and my opponent's going to be able to, either the Mongoose or the Wearer is going to come through and then I'm just, just going to lose, so... I end up uh, opting and bottoming the Source of Blasters because I don't want to show the, the Source of Blasters to my opponent, but yeah. Moving on to game number three. Now, of course, the days has become a lot better. And now I'm thinking that I want to reassess a little bit because of what I said about Meddling Mage. I'm thinking, okay, now my opponent's only answer to Dreadnought are Naturalize and Unsummon. So if I just play Meddling Mage and name Unsummon, now things become a lot more... Uh, more easy for me, right? Because I only have to save my counter magic to counter specifically uh, naturalize. Because and someone is the only answer for my meddling mage as well. So if I get to resolve a meddling mage, that severely limits my opponent's answers to my dreadnought. And not only that, but it also makes them more clunky because now their their answers are two mana as opposed to one, which on someone is. So on someone is obviously a beating for me. But Melee Mage beats and summon fairly easily. So, also I have seen my opponent's deck and I am suspecting that maybe they cut down on the Dreadnought plan, which would make sense to me because I am a much better Dreadnought deck than they are. So, I have Source of Pleasures, I have Seal of Cleansing. So, at that point, I'm like, why am I even playing a Null? A Null doesn't really make any sense in my deck. Like, I'd rather just like cut them straight up, bring in a potentially another counter spell and call it a day. Now we move on to game three, and we have a kind of a very good hand. We have Gush, we have Islands uh, to cash in that Gush. We also have Seal Removal as a way to, to stop my opponent's Dreadnought. So, feeling really, really good about my, my, my opener. Opponent keeps seven, but we are on the play, and we can potentially set up an early, an early Dreadnought here. So we top the days play second land and pass it back again. My opponent showed me on someone and they showed the willingness to play around this. And correctly so, of course. So by passing the turn back, I can potentially gush and days as well. But right now, obviously, I only have two lands, so I can only do one of those. Opponent opts on my end step and then goes here on my coast and passing the turn back. So 
Now it's time for the Battle of Wits. Uh, my goal here is to find and cast a meddling mage, naming on summon, and I think thing I think that things are gonna get a lot easier from there. Here we got find slide of hand, got find a foil. Again, Daze and Gush allow me to play on my island very nicely and just continue playing the game. Now it's gonna be interesting whether my opponent goes for their own dreadnought in the following turn. Opt on my end step and they untap. Eight cards in hand, so. Very likely that whatever they are trying to set up is is going to be good. <laughs> they, they have the cards to, to make it happen. So opponent goes for Island into Careful Study. I'm not sure that I agree with that sequencing. If they want to find Gush or something like that, then things are going to get awkward. They, they would want to potentially discard the City of Brass to hold on to an island, but, but I don't know what, what they're playing around there. Study definitely it's an awkward card in my opponent's deck because it, it is actual card disadvantage. It does enable threshold, but it is actual card disadvantage as opposed to something like um, like Madness where they have access to Squee or uh, Rudwala. They discard Mental Note and Vision Charm. So it was just like a card disadvantage spell there, like not, not particularly interesting. So they go for Mongoose here. Obviously, I can't do anything, so gonna let it go again a little misstep on my opponent they should have tapped uh yabimaya coast although i guess that what they're trying to do is they're they were trying to play around days so if i if i daze they don't have to take a point of damage but it's kind of minuscule i think maybe it is fine to actually no it's actually they're right like it's actually better for them to do that here we do find counter spell and now things are great for me so i can go dreadnought then stifle and we're gonna have three layers of protection uh, with foil, counterspell, and the daze. So this is obviously pretty great. The only awkward thing would be if my opponent has unsummon and they cast it on my end step. But again, my opponent has shown the willingness to play around daze. So I really doubt that they're going to do that right now. They go for mental note instead, which is something that, you know, maybe they, they were potentially trying to bait the daze on, but I'm, I'm not interested in doing that at all, of course. So now they go island, and again, if they have triple on someone, that's a problem, but we can beat most other things. So they lead on someone, we can just counter spell. Then they take a second to think, they tap colorless, and they're gonna tap uh, Cedar Brass for a green mana, and they attempt to naturalize my Dreadnought, which I will, of course, foil between Source of Plowshares and Basic Island. Uh, we're, we're kind of building a beautiful stack here. Last card is on someone, which I can daze and now it is it, it is an absolutely gorgeous stack not even kidding look at this look at this beauty over here Oof, so hot beautiful pre-modern stack right here so the first thing resolves which was this now the foil resolves now the counter spell resolves and now we know we're gonna be good to go we're gonna tap with our dreadnought we get to play our island we get to opt first if we want to, but we're, I mean, it, we are not gonna be able to source the plushers anything, we're not gonna be able to melee mage anything, so I just lead on up to play around. Although, if they had days, we would have lost, so they, they can't have days, so never mind. <laughs> that was that was just me being overly cautious. They do have sleight of hand, and we find gush, which is far and away the best possible thing we could have found there. Obviously, I'm not gonna gush right now because next turn I can use my mana for something potentially and then gush, so. Not gonna gush right here, but yeah, we just have to dodge another way that my opponent can answer my dreadnought. So that would be another naturalizer, or another unsummon. And even if they do, like we have a pretty significant amount of time. Like we're gonna be taking three from this mongoose. So even if they do find an answer to to this dreadnought right here, we still have time to set up another one. But now with my opponent going for it here with a seal of removal in play, <laughs> I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. Maybe they have stifle for my seal of removal. And that's what they're trying to, to set up here. But now that I drew the foil, this basically locks it up. There, there's nothing they can have that I care about with a seal of removal. And we're going to, even if they have stifle, we can just foil it and we can just swing for lethal. So going to be attacking for 12 and that is us going on to the finals to play against the master himself Paul Master so all right here we go the finals versus Paul Master and this hand is pretty good so we'll keep it um no idea what uh, Pablo is playing right here uh he's been doing really well with oath a uh, prison oath that is so i think that's what i'm going to hedge towards 
This is very interesting though. I think I'm gonna lead on basic island because I may want to cast like a medley mage or something like that. And I know that that makes my foil a little bit awkward, but I can always just daze whatever he plays. Gemstone mine, okay. What do you got, Paul? Duress. Well, I'm just gonna opt and daze this. Another island, probably don't want that. Uh, well, there we go. <laughs> All right, so daze that and we're just going to make a replay of the same turn. Uh, but now this time around, I think I'm actually gonna, ooh, interesting. Do I wanna go with Tudor here? So he went with Duress. This could be Angry Hermit or Song Combo deck like that. I think I'm gonna go, uh, this is so close. I think I wanna play out the Furnace now that I drew it. But I also think that I wanna play out the get a planes so I can tutor on my upkeep if I need to. What would I be tutoring for? I guess I'm not really tutoring for anything that matters on my upkeep. So it's better for me to go island. Because the only thing that I would be tutoring for would be like seal of removal, I guess. But uh, this fern is just being in play. Oh, okay. Dromar's Cavern. Medley Mage. Huh. Uh, well, we have to counter that one. So... Uh, actually, I don't have to counter that one. Yeah, I actually don't have to because I have access to seal of removal. Yeah, so I think I'm just gonna let it go. I think I'm just gonna let it go. We don't have source to pleasures in the main deck anymore. So that's something that I definitely have to, wo uh, to uh, work with and something that I have to keep in mind. But I don't think that I want to be foiling this right here. <laughs> Medley Mage is very interesting. The thing is, I don't know yet what he is doing. So I think I'm gonna chill on this melee mage for now. Replace the gemstone mine. Swings for two, that's fine. Very interesting deck he's playing over there. Scroll rack. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm just gonna medley mage land tax, I think. I I'm just, uh, actually, do I wanna do this? I think so. I think I, I, I actually need to to draw some cards here. Island is not great. Days. Okay, so I'm just going to name land tax this medley mage. I guess I could also name source to plowshares. Because if he had land tax, he would have cast it already. So I'm just gonna name source to plowshares here. Swords to plowshares. Uh, but right now I'm very intrigued about what Pole Master is doing over here. Like it's not something that I've seen before. Here acts, that's fine. Rack is just card selection, right? But it's not if there's if there's no engine going on, if there's no land tax engine, the rack is not really doing anything. Yeah, so he 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 just can't be playing land tax, right? Like that's just not a thing. He can't be playing land tax here. I'm definitely dacing this one. So that's very nice. Being able to exchange here days for medley mage seems seems really really good for me. If he wants to attack, I'll take it. He doesn't want to attack. So we can just chill. And as soon as we set up the combo, that's a nice draw. So as soon as we set up the combo, we can just go seal of removal and we can deal with this medley mage. So we're just going to play it slow. We're going to play a little bit for longer game here. Enlightened Tutor on upkeep. There's no way he's playing land tax, right? He is playing land tax. Well, that's wild to me. Well, I'm going to have to foil that. That is getting foiled. Oh, he just passes the turn back. Very interesting. Okay. Let's untap another foil. All right, I think I'm okay playing this game. Like I'm the one with gushes, right? So he racks on end step. He did shuffle with the tutor. So that's obviously very good for him. I could do something like set up, um, could do something like set up. What's this? I mean, actually land tax doesn't really do anything. I have, I have gush. So I can mess things up for him. Place wins some peace. That scroll like, is actually giving some very, very good uh, card selection. I just foil the land tax. Because um, he can just destroy his own land if he wants to. So we foil land tax there. Untap. Gush. So let's just gush. Main face. Play another land. Now we can medley mage. And now we can name land tax. And... Pass the turn back. So what we're gonna do is we're going to next turn we can tutor for 
I guess it's a matter of do I want to do this on upkeep. I think I do because I have, uh, they could have seal, but th th that's fine. I can just use the foil and seal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upkeep Enlightened Tutor for seal of removal. I'm going to balance my opponent's meddling mage. Then I'm going to uh, do my Dreadnought combo. And that should be pretty good for me. So, oops, uh, forgot to put a pause on upkeep. So I guess we don't do that anymore. <laughs> Whoops. All right. So I guess we're going to have to chill for a little bit here. White, white for seal of cleanse. Uh, this seems worth foiling. And now I can do the play that I was saying earlier. So now we just untap Enlighten Tutor for seal of removal. We untap, we play seal of removal. And I think I'm just gonna gush before doing anything else to see what my options are. Stifle is nice. So we're just gonna go um, Seal of Removal, your meddling mage, play Dreadnought, Stifle. And now I can just use Vision Charm to protect the onboard Dreadnought. So I think this should be game. Source to Plushers doesn't do anything. Once again, meddling mage being absolutely incredible, right? <laughs> that's the, that's the, just the... That's the name of the of the game here. Just once again, Medley Mage doing Medley Mage things. <laughs> it's so good in this deck. It really is astounding how the how good this card is in this deck. Upkeep and Light in Tutor. That's fine. Aura of Silence. That is also fine. So that's his entire turn to cast that Aura of Silence. So I guess he doesn't have Second Seal of Cleansing. And I can just protect this Dreadnought from the Aura of Silence with Vision Charm, so it's not a big deal at all. So that's a forced play. Face out my Dreadnought. And that was a two for one, right? Because he had to tutor in order to get to get that going. So now he's in crate. Now even the Meddling Mages are starting to be a little bit threatening. And the City of Brass is starting to be a little bit of a... A little bit of a... Um, Liability. So he activates scroll rack and concedes. Great. Awesome. All right. That was great. A meddling mage, obviously very good against us. So the source to plushes is going to be coming in. Shout out to seal of removal, by the way. Shout out to seal of removal. So seal of cleansing sounds incredible. No rod, probably pretty decent. He could have access to um, like red elemental blasts. That's something to watch out for. Daces on the draw can go, and I think I'm gonna cut counter spells. Gonna leave in the foils, leave in the gushes. I think meddling mage is pretty good. Let's cut a tutor and leave a counter spell. Uh, yeah, so uh, with what I've seen, I think this is the setup that I want. But yeah, I mean, meddling mage, he, he just has to keep the meddling mages in, right? He can next level me and just get rid of the meddling mages, so he blanks my source to plowshares and seal of removal. <laughs> So, that's fine. The thing is that Meddling Mage is so good against me, right? So, he kind of has to... He, he kind of just has to keep it. My Meddling Mages are better than his. So, that, that part is for sure. Game number two. Hands great. Keep it. Moves to six. Planes go. So, I can cantrip here if I want to. I think I want to. I'm looking for another land. Uh, yeah, Island's great. So now next turn I can safely play this uh, this fetch, get my basic island, stop my opponent's engine. Uh, oh, okay. Does that matter? I'm gonna probably be stifling this this land. Um, yeah, let's go with island instead. I could draw foil, and that's bad. But I think having the option to, uh, of what to do with this flooded strand is potentially pretty good. Ooh, double stifle. Okay, okay. Um, so we're playing a slow game over there. So now I'm, I'm just going to go get a basic island with this. My life total, I doubt that it's going to matter enough. So we just play a little bit. Oh, I misclicked there. I definitely wanted to stifle that. Definitely, definitely wanted to stifle that. That was just a misclick. Land tax. Yeah, that's good. That's fine. Just blow it up with Seal of Cleansing. Play a land. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to play a Seal of Cleansing here. Blow that up. Now we pass it back. All right. Untap. Uh, let's shuffle. I'm going to get a basic island here. Play wastes. And I think I just want to pass the turn. Feel like I want to draw some medley mages, some of that kind of stuff. Opponent missing land drops over there. So I think these stifle are still going towards those uh, islands. 
So now we have an island for, for foil. A null. I guess we're just hard casting foil. Pass the turn. Just hitting land drops, just out here, chilling, thriving. Opponent misses land drop. That's good. I could have hard cast the gush there on my opponent's end step. I don't see I don't see why though. We're just playing a little bit of a control game here. My opponent's missing land drops and they're gonna start going to discard this turn, so. Sanded Swarm. I guess that blanks my foil, so I might as well do this. I might, might as well counter this one. Uh, we found another land, which is a little bit brutal. Um, ugh. The thing is, I don't really need to do anything. So I don't really want to be doing anything. What is this? Scroll Rack. That seems worth annulling. That's a planes. I think I'm fetching for a planes here. I have enough white cards that I just don't have to take any damage. Another Dreadnought. So now we can gush. Medley Mage is perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. Okay, name Source to Plowshares. I think it's pretty. Oh, actually, what if I double Dreadnought here? We have Source to Plowshares already named. I could go super aggro. I could go super aggro here. I think I want to go super aggro. So my opponent would need to have two non source to plowshares way of killing both of my dreadnoughts. Yeah, but if they do, it's such a blowout. And now they have to deal with my meddling mage. So the only issue here is that if my opponent finds their own meddling mage, that is pretty problematic for me. I think that it's likely they have meddling mage in hand. The thing is that they don't really have werebear. Oh, wow. Well, that's. Not what I was expecting. Alright, my opponent's deck is super cool. Enlightened Tutor is nice. Um, so if I attack... Hmm, I think we play out the island and... My opponent can actually turn on Threshold if I attack, so it's probably not very good for me. So I think we just pass it back. Undiscovered Paradise. Duress. You got it. Yeah, maybe, maybe I took it too slow here. Maybe I was just supposed... Because this was going to happen eventually, right? My, my opponent was going to find their um, their color mana. And that was eventually going to become problematic. So, one layer of protection and I think I'm going for it. That's, that's enough. Okay, so one for Dreadnought. Stifle. One Dreadnought. Stifle. This is gonna be triple Dreadnought. Like, this just has to be good enough, right? Um, they could have something like Pernicious Deed and that would be devastating, but I think this is fine. I'm playing into Pernicious Deed, but uh, this is that one. But I'm putting my opponent very, very much off on a, in a tough spot. So they will need to find answer to three Dreadnoughts in this turn. And it can't be source to plushers. But yeah, now that I think about it, maybe I should have gone for it a couple of turns ago. Is Triple Dread not gonna be good enough? Yes, it is! All right, another playoffs title. Yep! <sighs> Manly Mage, dude! <laughs> Manly Mage is so sick. Manly Mage is just so, so good in this deck and people just don't wanna play it. Blows my mind. Good games, Paul. The reign of terror of the blue-white shrimp continues. And this was a very, very cool playoffs. Uh, I made a couple of mistakes here in my place, uh, for sure. So, lots to learn from this from this event, but it feels good to be carried by what I think is the best deck in the format. Blue-white uh, Dreadnought. I know that people are super high on Mono Blue, but I'll continue just winning with, <laughs> with Blue-White. And as we just saw in, in that very last match and in other matches throughout this event, um, Metal Image is just absolutely incredible, right? Like, it, it really blows my mind that people are not, uh, they're just not trying to, uh, to to mess around with this. The Slide of Hands felt quite good. I was a big fan of Slide of Hand. And I was trying to keep in the back of my mind, okay, like, would this be better as a portent or something like that? And in a couple of situations, I think it was, uh, when I was trying to set things up, the issue that I have with Ponder is we only have exactly six ways to shuffle between the four Flooded Strands and the two Enlightened Tutors. So shuffling the deck once we have seen like one card that we want is not great. So Portent would be only better than Sleight of Hand if we exactly wanted the top two, the top two cards, or like two of the three cards 
um, from the from the top three. Um, so besides that, then sleight of hand is most of the time gonna be better. I guess the other way with if we want neither of all of the top three cards. In that case, you portent just shuffles and you get a new look. So I think sleight of hand may be better. But uh, those slots being cantrips actually felt quite, quite good. So I think that this version with cantrips may be better than the version, the version that I was playing before with the main deck, uh, with the main deck Winter or and, like some extra main deck Tudor targets and the Source of Pleasure. So uh, I think I really, really like this list. Felt super smooth. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be playing probably some more of this in the next competitive event and some other brewskis in the leagues. So if you're enjoying the promoter content, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. And if you would like to support the promoter content, there's a couple of ways that you can do so. The first one, of course, is uh, for free by just using mana traders and digital players um, uh, services you can uh, actually support the stream by using the links in the description down below to go about your business and then if you would like to support my content directly you can do so through patreon you can do so through donations every donation is very very appreciated and with any donation of 30 dollars or more i can play any deck list of your choosing in this make a video on it for the channel and uh, finally the last time the last uh, way that you can do uh, su that you can support the stream sorry is uh, through coaching so if you're interested in booking coaching sessions with me and take your gaming to the next level uh, you can find all of the information that you need in the description of the video down below thank you so so much for watching and i'll see you in the next uh, video bye bye